in. I have a really exciting DIY for you guys today. It is a make your own purse out of a recycled book. And in this case, I'm using this old copy of Order of the Phoenix from Harry Potter. You may or may not know, but I'm a librarian and this is a copy that we um, decided not to carry anymore, probably because it's damaged. Um, actually, you know what? It looks like it was a donation since it doesn't have a barcode or anything on it. So I thought I would take it and destroy it and turn it into a purse. It is not my own copy. I would never do this to my own copy of Harry Potter because I love Harry Potter. <laughs> I would never. So a few weeks ago, I was approached by Zara from Craft Infinity and Beyond, who I love, by the way. She is so talented. So she asked if I would be willing to do a collaboration with her. And of course I was like, um, yes, yes, yes. A thousand times yes, I would love to do a collaboration. And she thought it would be really fun to turn ordinary objects that you wouldn't expect into purses and she made the most amazing fishbowl purse like i cannot i cannot i am in awe it's a plastic fishbowl and she used resin at the bottom of the fishbowl to make kind of like water and it looks like the fish are swimming around in the fishbowl i mean it's amazing it's amazing so i will put a link to that video and her channel down below and in the icard so make sure you go check it out because seriously amazing my jaw hit the floor so i thought being that i'm a librarian i would do a book bag <laughs> get it book bag <laughs> because i'm gonna turn this copy into a purse i'm going to use this copy you could use any book you find i chose this one because it's nice and big so i think it'll actually you know be functional as a bag because it'll hold more stuff than a smaller book you could use your choice of fabric and i found this really cute fabric at michael's your choice of bag closure but i found this snap at Michael's and your bag needs a strap and I just so happened to find this at the thrift store and it is literally a DIY purse bag strap but it is perfect and exactly the style I wanted so talk about fortuitous and it was only three dollars so amazing right I will put a link to everything I use in the description below so first things first is we are going to trash this book <laughs> Now, I am kind of bummed out that the cover of Harry Potter is not actually on here, so I think I'm going to try and find a way to put the cover back on, probably using some kind of glue, like E6000 or hot glue. What we need to do first is take all these pages out. The easiest way to do that is to just open it up to the very front inside cover and just cut along the spine. Now, funny story, Years ago, I used to work at a bookstore, and what I'm doing now is called stripping. It's called stripping a book. I did not know that, and I'm helping a customer at the register, and it was like a, a guy, some guy at the, at the register, and my coworker comes up to me and just with the straightest face asks me, do you know how to strip? And I looked from her to the customer I was helping and back at her, now keep in mind, I lived in Vegas at the time. So I, he looked amazed and surprised and I looked back at her and I was like, girl, I, why, no, I don't know how to strip. What are you talking about? And she meant strip books. Do I know how to strip books? And I'm like, girl, you think you could have said that? You think you could have clarified? Do you know how to strip books? Oh my God, it was mortifying. Needless to say, anytime I have to do this process, that's exactly what I think of. Do you know how to strip? Now, ordinarily, these donated books would actually go back to the community at my library. We would put it up either up for sale or it would go back on the shelf. But because of the pandemic, we actually can't accept any donations right now. And somehow this one kind of snuck in there. So this was actually gonna unfortunately get thrown away. So what I did is I let it kind of quarantine for some time and I also like wiped it down like crazy. And so now it's safe to use. So here is the whole book completely stripped. Oh, what the heck? You never know what you're gonna find inside a book. <laughs> 
Well, this person got all the way to, oh, when they go to the Department of Mysteries. Ooh, can I just say this book made me cry? So I have figured out how I can put this back on here. Make it permanent, but we need to make it waterproof first. I'm going to line it with shipping tape. So what we are gonna do, where'd my E6000 go? Oh. oh, it's right there. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I think the easiest way to do this is to apply the E6000 to the spine, and then we'll do each side because you wanna make sure we glue it while it's closed because this paper does kind of flex with the book. When you do it like this, it's a little bit bigger than the book itself, so keep that in mind. All right, now we have a permanent book cover. Next, we want to kind of decide how wide we want the book to open. So I think kind of a good amount is maybe just a little bit wider than the spine, something that's big enough for you to put your hand in, kind of reach aside. Also probably big enough for like a wallet. If you end up stuffing something in there that's a little bit wider than the spine, you still want your purse to be able to kind of open a little bit. So I would say maybe a little bit wider than the spine. I'm gonna take some of these papers that were inside the spine and use that as like a template. Ta-da! So this is going to be the kind of fabric triangle that goes inside our bag. It's going to be what goes, so this is the opening, it's gonna be what goes on the side. So it opens, but it doesn't fall open. Which means when we cut the fabric, we need to leave a little bit of a seam allowance, or seam allowance, because I am not sewing anything. So you see, it's going to fit in our bag just like this. This will go here, then this edge will be folded and sit right inside here. So now I'm just going to cut that out of the fabric. We're going to cut two. Oh my gosh, look at how stinking cute this is. I'm using E6000 because it is a really, really strong bond. Definitely better than just regular fabric glue. You could use hot glue though, that would be totally fine. I'm not sure how long hot glue would actually keep everything in the place that you want it. It might fall apart a little bit quicker. But if you're doing it just for a night out, or for a purse for a Comic Con, or Halloween, then yeah, hot glue would work just fine. And I'm just gonna make sure that everything dries before I move on, because I don't want to accidentally pull anything out of place. While that is drying though, I am going to hem the tops by adding some glue and folding it over like this. You could absolutely hand stitch this and or sew it with your sewing machine instead of gluing it, but I don't really feel like getting my sewing machine out. So something I totally did not expect happened. You can see where the tape is. The glue on the other side of the cover soaked through the cover and like melted the tape. So, um, <laughs> so don't put tape on the cover. I'm gonna try and fix this by removing the tape and also removing this like waxy film that is on the cover. And I'm gonna try painting some paper Mod Podge on it. So fingers crossed that that works. <laughs> Okay, so far so good. You can tell it's like actually kind of shiny and has like a weird kind of waxy feel to it. And I'm hoping that that's the actual paper and not the glue soaking through. Um, yeah, super random, but I still think the E6000 is your best bet for attaching um, the cover permanently to a book. When you make your book bag, I think this was just a weird example of it kind of bubbling up this like film. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the Mod Podge. I am nervous that the exact same thing's gonna happen that happened with the tape, but with Mod Podge. So really, fingers crossed that this works. This might be a huge mistake. I'm just gonna let this dry. The next day. 
Okay, so our next step is to actually continue with our handles. And what we need to do is make like just the littlest loop out of the fabric. Um, and I am actually going to use needle and thread for that. And that will attach to the book because obviously I can't connect these rings straight to the book. So I need to create a little loop with the fabric. Before I start sewing these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stronger loop by folding the fabric like that into thirds and I'm gonna glue it down with some Fabri-Tac. And so that is about the same width as the handle strap. Now that the glue is dry on my straps, I can sew them to the little loops just like this. Nice and easy. I'm gonna make the, oops, I'm gonna make the strap for the fastener the same way I did for the handles. So I'm gonna cut a pretty wide strip um, and then glue it together and then attach the little fasteners. To attach these little magnet closures, it has these little prongs, so what I need to do is make little slices into my strap and then this will slide through and then connect on the other side. Now it's time to make the lining and because my pattern goes in um, one direction I'm actually going to cut two that meet right in the middle so the pattern can face the right way both ways. I'm going to draw around this but I'm going to leave a bit of a border because it needs to glue down um, and I think I'm going to stop at the end of the spine. Now I need to attach the other side of the closure and I'm going to do it on the same side that is the front cover and the difference this time is it's going to go into a piece of cardboard in between the fabric and the book. Okay, we got all of our pieces made so now it's finally time to start piecing it all together and finishing our book bag. The easiest way I think is we're gonna attach these sides to the edge of the book before we do our lining. Now, while the edges are kind of setting up, I got my Mod Podge under here to kind of prop it up so it can air out a little bit. So I'm gonna take this chance to glue down my straps. I think I'm just gonna put them like right here. Now, while these are drying, they've been kind of drying for a little while, I'm going to start attaching the lining. This is the front of the book, which is where I want the magnetic clasp to go, right in the middle. So I'm going to apply some glue right along the edge and then just lay this top edge down right on it. Oh man, this is starting to look good! Ooh. This looks like an actual purse now! Oh my gosh! Okay, now that that side is all done, I can start working on the other side. What I am going to do is I'm going to glue down the snap fastener, and I'm also going to glue down the straps. And then lastly, I'm going to glue down the lining, and I'm going to do all of this the same way I did the first part. Right now this is drying, which is why I have these binder clips on here, but there's one last thing I want to do is to actually just do a couple really simple stitches right here on both sides and that will make it so that whenever it closes it'll automatically go inside the book rather than sticking out like this. I am so in love with this purse. I'm really, really surprised, to be honest, that it came out as well as it did. I had a few roadblocks in the beginning with the cover of the book and taping it and then the glue seeping through the tape and then the protective cover coming off of the book cover. Oh my goodness. But the Mod Podge seriously saved the day. I even had a chance to take it out with my husband when we went to go visit a local arcade. It was really fun to kind of show off the purse and I got a lot of compliments on it. I even had a few people ask me how I made the bag, so I really hope these directions help you to make your own. And if you do make your own, make sure you tag me on Instagram with a photo so I can see what you made. And don't forget to check out Zara at Craft Infinity and Beyond. 
Her fishbowl purse is amazing. It's out of this world. I've never seen anything like it. It's so cool. So make sure you go check it out. And make sure you leave a comment that says, Hi, Coffee Bean, so she knows I sent you. If you like this video and you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so you get notified of when I post. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Love you a latte.